Hello everyone, this is the Crimson Cure, welcoming you to the Crimson Tower, a place where we keep a feminine foot on the neck of the gynocracy, feminism, and black male misandry. So go ahead, pull up a chair, stay a while, and listen. Hey y'all, Donnie Keith here, a.k.a. Auntie Peaches from the Auntie's Radio Show, also on The Voice of Reason. I'm here to say that ever since my man started taking A-game, he's been on top of his A-game. When I say A-game, I mean his A-game. He's more focused. He's definitely working out more. His attitude is better. And he's not complaining of all over body aches due to poor blood circulation because A-game provides great blood circulation. If you know what I mean, ladies, that blood circulation. Sometimes I have to hide the A-game in the bushes when I'm out walking the dog just because I want some sleep. (laughs) If you know what I mean, ladies. Stay on top of your A-game. Fellas, get your A game. Hey there, my Crimsonites, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I am, of course, your host, the Crimson Cure. And as usual, we're just going to jump right into the topic. So what I wanted to talk about is something that I think is seldom talk, talked about between ladies, and that's sexual discipline. And when I say sexual discipline, I mean to be disciplined with your sex, to have discernment on who, what, when, why, and where. Because we'll hear that the men need to be more disciplined and they need to have more self-control when it comes to who they're choosing, who they're going to be with, you know, and all of these sorts of things. But it's rarely ever talked about with the women. Well, Crimson Cure is going to talk about it. Ladies, where's your sexual discipline? And the reason why I really brought this up is because earlier I did a live stream about the father of Jocelyn Adams, the seven-year-old girl who was shot on the west side of Chicago in a McDonald's drive-thru. And you can catch that replay of the live stream right here. And this man... And if you look at that replay, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Has a child. I don't know if that was his only child or not. But he has a child and that means there was some woman somewhere willing to lay down with him and then willing to take in his seed and then willing to have a child, which basically is a replication of a man in a woman's womb. To, to get his seed and then replicate him, okay? And birth him out a potential legacy. Some woman around him was willing to do that with him. And he's not the worst that I've seen. I've seen worse than that. And so that's what actually brings this up. What's with, what's with no sexual discipline? Just because we think or we know that men will readily have sex with us if we offer, does that mean you got to offer it to everybody or to anybody, no matter what the circumstances are, no matter who this person is, no matter what they stand for or don't stand for, what they have or don't have, type of character they have or don't have, like, Just because he's a man with a penis and you have a vagina doesn't mean that you got to throw that everywhere, especially off of superficial reasons like, oh, he cute. It's a million cute dudes, let me tell you. Okay, the the world will never run out of cute dudes. It's just not going to happen. Cute dudes is just going to be forever and ever and ever. 
you're going to be old and you're going to see an old cute dude, okay? You're young and you see a young cute dude. You're middle-aged and you see a middle-aged cute dude, okay? These dudes is ranging anywhere from hideous geely monsters to the finest men you ever thought you saw walking the face of this earth, okay? So you need some sexual discipline. No one ever tells, especially young women, that they're not supposed to have it. As in point of fact, they tell you to have a, a HOE phase. That's what they tell you to have. Just go around and approach men and sex and dating in a very masculine type of way. This could not be more destructive for women. First of all, we're not men. We're not built like men. We don't experience sex like men because we're the ones that are getting penetrated. All right. So men don't experience sex like that, not heterosexual sex. OK. We do. We're the ones that are the vessels. We're having a different experience sexually than they are. Even when it's you and him together. He's having a different experience of this than you. Just based off the biology alone. Okay. It feels different to him than it does to you. And all of that. And running around procreating and having sex with some of the worst men in your whole community. There is no sexual discipline. The number of single mothers, we like to put that off on the men. But women, you're not closing your legs. You're not saying to yourself, no, not you. Not you. And when you are turning down a man, it's usually for the wrong reasons. And you accept men for the wrong reasons also. You're supposed to be rejecting men that don't have any leadership, that don't have any system, order, and structure, that don't have anything to teach you, anything to tell you, or no place to take you. It's really these men that don't have anything for you because they don't have anything for themselves. You can't give from an empty cup. Okay? You can't get a million dollars from a broke person. All right? So you will choose a man based on some of the most stupid, superficial reasons. Y'all are choosing men based on, well, I'm going to take him from her petty, jealous agendas. You don't even want the dude. You just want the satisfaction of being able to draw his attention, at least temporarily, away from some other woman that you may not like for whatever reason. That reason probably petty, too. And... You'll do that for those reasons because he was marginally nice to you. He might have spent $20 on you. See, you're so devoid of femininity that a lot of these men don't have to show you a lot of masculinity in order to woo you because you don't even understand what masculinity really looks like. So all that he has to do is do the bare minimum of anything that even appears to be masculine and you're soaking wet. So starved out for any masculinity aside from your own. So you don't actually don't know what it looks like. This is what's got most of you ladies caught up. A man and come show you this much masculinity, this much little masculinity. And there you go. And you don't know what real masculinity actually looks like. You think the guy that's real rowdy and real rah rah and real jumping in somebody's face and ready to fight and all this type of stuff is showing you masculinity. Actually, He's showing you a man in chaos. He's showing you a man that doesn't have sense enough to assess his situations properly to know when he should be aggressive and when he shouldn't. You don't have any sexual discipline. This is why you have four children and three baby daddies. You don't know how to vet men. You don't know what masculinity looks like and you have absolutely no control over your vagina. 
None. No self-control at all. You will lay with anybody at any time for any reason. And then when the outcomes are not what you think that they should be, you're ready to point your finger and blame the man as if he's doing something to you that you did not allow. And this message is really for the younger women, but a lot of you older women can hear it too. Because a, a, a young HOE turned into an old one. You ain't got no sexual discipline or, or, or you don't, nothing. There's, there's nothing around you that imposes order on that. And instruct you as to who should be partaking and who shouldn't. That's why a lot of y'all running around here crazy as road lizards. It's just bats in the belfry. Because all you do is take me in. None of y'all better not say y'all got a nut allergy because I know it's a lie. You ain't got no nut allergy. Many, many nuts as you eat, you ain't got no nut allergy. I don't even want to hear that. Running around here with all these kids talking about you allergic to birth control. You wasn't allergic. You ain't got no nut allergy. So you ain't got no birth control allergy. I don't want to hear that. It's like 30 something out there. It's 30 some different kinds of birth control out there. You are not allergic to all of them. Talking about someone going to make you gain weight. You 50 pounds overweight anyway. What difference do it make to you? See, we going to tell the truth. We're going to tell the truth over on the Crimson Cure channel. We're not going to tell these half truths, <clears throat> excuse me, and these narratives. We're not going to tell those. We're going to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help us God. And you need some sexual discipline. I don't know where you're going to get it. I don't know who's going to teach it to you. I don't know whether or not you're going to get it. You need to get it from your spirituality. That's where it really comes from. Having some self-control actually comes from your spiritual growth. If you are spiritually immature, you're not going to be able to have any self-control. I have a lot of people come to me. I have been fasting Ramadan just as an example. I've been fasting Ramadan since I've been Muslim. I've been Muslim since 1996. Okay, I have never missed a month of Ramadan ever. And I got people that's been knowing me that have come still come up to me today and say, I don't know how you do that. I'll be done died, you know, uh, not eating. You ain't going to die because you ain't ate nothing for 16 hours. You'll be OK. And all that extra fat on your body, you'll be all right. You can live off of a camels, do it all the time. OK. Girl, I don't know how you do it because I have some self-discipline. I have, you know, some self-control. I don't have to lock myself away from food either. I can be, I can cook all day and not eat it. Trust me, I've done it because when you have a family and it's Ramadan, you cannot wait until time to break fast to start cooking. You need to cook a couple of hours before that. And you can't taste the food and it better be good. So I have become an expert at eyeballing seasonings and all of that other stuff. So I can be cooking all day and not, not even taste test nothing. It don't bother me because it's self-control. All you got to have is some self-control. All you have to have is order imposed on you from somewhere. And when you don't have any self-control, that means your spiritual value is weak. And when your spiritual value is weak, all of the other values become weak. They become in danger of folding and falling. So, ladies, I'm going to need you to gain some spiritual insight and some strength, thereby gaining you some self-control and which extends into your sexual discipline because all of this willingly wanton having sex everywhere with everybody and then trying to look at the men and say they should have some self-control. I'm not trying to hear you have knocked that off. All right. All right. So what I want everyone to do is sound off in the comment section. I want to know your take. Should women have to practice self, uh, self-control when it comes to sex? 
Or is this something that is only reserved for men to do? I want to hear everybody's opinion and everyone's comments. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye bye, Crimsonites. Hey guys, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you've got more to say on the topic, leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to support our sponsor who so graciously supports this channel by clicking the description box and the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. You can go ahead and get a 10% discount off of your next purchase using the code Kendra10. This has been yet another Crimson Cure production, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.